Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Uh, for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that I love to art journal and I love making paper dolls that I put right into my art journals and my junk journals. I like to show videos on how to make paper dolls, how to use them in different ways, and I came up with a really fun idea so I want to share it today. And you know, here's one of the ways that I put them in my, in my books. So here's a paper doll that I made. Her name is Lady Lovelace. I showed her in the last Paper Art Doll Parade. I ended up putting her in my journal and doing some journaling next to her. And I just, I just love how paper dolls give your journals an extra little something. So for this, I'm going to use a uh, page out of a coloring book. This is an adult coloring book from Creative Haven called Fantasy Fashions. And there are tons and tons of really fun images that you could do this technique with throughout the whole book. I mean, there's any of the pages would work for what I'm about to show you. For today, I'm going to use this image right here. And what I'm going to do first is to uh, scan it and print it onto paper or cardstock, doesn't really matter which one, so that I retain my original copy within the book. I have just a cheap Canon scanner printer set up and it was easy to just put this down on the flatbed and press uh, black and white copy and make a copy and I printed it onto a kind of lightweight cardstock. So I'm going to use this image as a focal on an art journal page. The background stuff won't be in there. I'm just going to use the girl. And what I want to do first before I trim her out to add her to an art journal page that I'll do a background with um, is notice these really neat shapes. There's interesting shapes within the pattern of her dress and all the girls in that book are like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take a piece of tracing paper, just a plain cheap piece of tracing paper and put it over this image and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a pencil. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to trace these individual shapes that are on this girl. They're going to be something super super fun to create her outfit to have all kinds of interest and texture and you'll see what I mean as I do it. It's going to be super super cool so I thought I would share what I'm doing because you might want to do it too so if you trace all these out all these shapes out like that I'm going to trace the whole thing and I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do next so I've traced all the shapes and down at the bottom where the page and the coloring book ends I'm going to add where this is rounded I'm going to come right around and make this rounded too just so that it looks a little bit nicer. And what I've ended up with is this. So this is going to be now a template for cutting out things that I'm going to use to put back over this doll and make her body really textured and really interesting. And I've uh, put this down in my Rangers Large Ranger Dilutions journal to see what journal it would fit in and it fits best in this journal. So this is where I'm going to use this. So I'm going to put this aside for now and the next step would be to do a background that I'm going to put my image over. And I'm going to use these three colors for my background because what I want to do is kind of an ombre effect for a background which is something a little bit different than I normally do. I normally put down a solid color and I'll add more colors to it and do some patchwork and things like that but I want it to be ombre like this dark at the bottom and light at the top. And you could use any brand of paint for this. It's just the technique that I'm using that I'm sure. I like to apply my background paint with a soft, damp sponge. And I apply the paint right to the sponge. And then I just start blending it in. So I'm starting with the lightest color at the top. And I'm looking at kind of going thirds on this page with the three colors. So I'm just going to start playing around with it until I get the effect that I like. I like an ombre look where it goes light to dark. Okay, so that's my first 
layer and then with the second color what I want to do is mix a little bit of the second color and the first color on my palette that just helps with that transition between between the colors so you're getting a kind of a lighter version of your second color and I'm going to just rub that in so as you can see it's just a little shade darker than that top color and I'm dabbing to kind of blend it out and it doesn't have to be perfect you can always go back and add more paint so now I'm going to add just the second color by itself onto my sponge and in about this section here I'm going to start adding that color Doing that little bit of dabbing really helps blend it out. So it's starting to go lighter, darker, darker. It's getting darker as we go along. And now I'm going to mix some of the second color and the third color. So I just put a dot of each on my, pal on my little paper palette and mix them together. Nothing too difficult. And now I'm just starting to add more colors. So we're getting darker, darker, darker as we go down the page. And then of course at the bottom is going to be just the dark color, the last color by itself. And I'm doing more of a dabbing application on the bottom color than a rubbing because I want it to be as dark as the paint is out of the tube. Look at what a nice ombre page that is. Love it, love it. Don't forget to paint your crack. I always say that. <laughs> paint your crack. Okay. So there is my ombre page. Love it. I love how that looks. And I can still, when it dries and I put my focal down, I can still do bordering. I can do, still do some stenciling, some doodling, whatever I want. But that just that basic initial page of it being in three colors like that is just really kind of fun and different than doing the same old thing each time. Now I'm going to put this aside, let it dry really well while I work on the paper doll. To dress up this girl and use this as a template for all my shapes, I want each thing, each section to be a different texture, a different color, something fun to look at and feel. So I have some cardstock I ran through some texture plates. I have some cute pattern paper, some handmade papers. This is really pretty textured purple paper. That was a sample. Uh, when I worked at a scrapbooking card making store, we would get samples of different kinds of paper that we could buy for people for card making. So that's just a little sample. I've got some lace. I have some paper doilies. I have napkin images. And I also have some scraps of sewing material.
So those are the things of interest that I want to use for all these little pieces. And what I want to do is kind of in my mind think about where I want to lay them out. So I think the material pieces, I'm going to put this section down here and this section up here. So these two pieces travel your eye and I'm going to use this material here and cut those shapes using those as templates. So I'm going to just cut these pieces out and when I cut them all out it's just going to be like a puzzle putting them together on over the original and it'll look really super cool when it's all Mod Podge down. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut apart all these little pieces that I have traced. So I'm going to cut them out and make them individual pieces. Here are all the pieces cut out and now I can use them as templates over my papers and my material to cut out different pieces out of different things and then lay them out to recreate the doll like a, like a puzzle. So I can take a piece like this and put it over the paper. I could draw a line. If I wanted to I could use a um, pen and trace around it but I'm just going to hold it down onto the paper and then cut around it to cut out this piece. And you want to make them as nice as you can but they don't have to be perfect. So there's a piece cut out that goes right here and now I want to put make something else have that same pattern so I'm going to use this piece and cut out another piece. And I'm just going to do that with all my little textures of lace and textured paper and material and cut them all out until I have them all pieced and I'm ready to create my fun and funky dressed up paper doll. Here are all my pieces cut out and I'm saving these pieces. I'll put them in an envelope in case I want to recreate this at another time doing something different. I'll have all the pieces. So now I'm going to trim this out ready to go on to my uh, art journal. So next I'm going to glue her into place and because I printed her onto cardstock and it's a little bit thicker than regular paper, I can use art glitter glue to glue her down to the page. Otherwise, if it were paper, just a regular printer paper, I would use matte gel medium because glue would show through paper. So I'm going to glue her into place. And I have this stencil. It's a brass stencil. It's from 2003, a Lynn Harlow brass stencil for card making and it's got hats and I think I'm going to cut out pieces and make a hat to go on her head and I'll use some of the same elements that I used in her um, in her outfit will be used for the hat but I'll I'll do that last. So I wanted to leave room so that I could have her hat on her head so I'm kind of tipping her sideways and leaving a little bit room right here since I extended this part down a little bit. So this is about the right spot for where to put her. I glued her into place and I used my brayer over the top of her to make her nice and flat and I'm going to let that glue completely dry before I start adhering the pieces because what medium over this if the glue underneath is not dry I will make this buckle so once it's dry I'm going to start adding my little pieced out elements over her and the first thing I want to do is to take some acrylic paints and some colored pencils and to do her arms and her face and her hair before I add the pieces on top. So the first layer I did on the skin was just to paint a cream colored acrylic paint and then the next thing I do is to spray a thin spray of matte fixative. This is a workable fast drying fixative. I got this one from uh, Blick.com and once I spray a light mist over that paint then I can go back in with colored pencils and do a lot of shading and depth to it. So I'm going to color in her hair, I'm going to uh, spray fixative and I'm going to finish her face and her skin tones before I start using matte gel medium to adhere my pieces. The face with acrylic base and then a spray of matte fixative and then colored pencils. So now I'm ready to add my little pieces onto the body. And I'm going to use um, matte gel medium. I like Tri Art but you can use any brand. And I'm going to just start putting the pieces into place. So you can put it 
some matte gel medium onto the page right on that spot we're going to glue down and then I always put it on the back also of what I'm putting down because that makes it really stick nicely and then you just use this as a template to lay your pieces into place it makes it super easy to do the paper piecing part of it and I always go over the top just to kind of seal it in just like that so I'm going to cover the whole thing with all my little pieces And this is how it looks all pieced together. Look how cool that is. So you've got all kinds of textures. If you've never tried Mod Podging pieces of material down, you'll absolutely love it. The feel of it is just so cool when that uh, matte gel medium dries. It's got a real cool texture. And this was napkin. So there's napkin and material and textured papers. And I put a little bit of doily at the bottom just for a little something. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, doodle this and uh, finish it off. I like doing things like this is a uh, Posca pen in gold. It is a fine tip Posca pen. So I'm going to go around her jewelry in gold with a Posca pen. I'm going to take some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Dusty Concord and Seedless Preserves and I'm going to just run those over those textured pieces that I did. Lightly, just lightly run them over to make the patterns pop. So look at how that made the the pattern from um, embossing my embossing plates it makes the pattern stand out even more so look at just take that lightly run it over there and now you really see the texture super cool I can do some shading with some Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 so just put a little bit of shading in here and add some depth see how that makes it look shaded and shadowed like up here on her shoulder and down where that collar would be kind of turned in a little bit I have to be careful because my distress ink isn't dry but it looks pretty as it's blending together makes that look a little more shapely taking a Posca pen and I'm just doing some doodling so I'm tracing this pattern that was on that handmade pattern paper and I'm just bringing out the shape of the pattern so you can do doodling there's so many things that you can do to add to this just to make it fancy schmancy and to dress up your girl so I'm going to keep going playing around with it I and made then her hat the same way I took this stencil and I just traced out the pieces used it as a template cut out pieces from the same textured pieces glued it together on a piece of black cardstock and created her hat that matches her outfit next I'm going to outline the whole image in a uh, black graphic liner pen so here's how she looks with doodling I did some pen doodling I did my ink put some shadows on her, the jewelry in a gold pen, and a feather in her hat. I put a little feather under the brim and glued it onto the page so it looks like her hat has a feather in it. And it's just super cute. I love it. Great paper doll on the page. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose another image out of that same book and repeat the whole thing and put another one over here. Since I've already shown you the process, I won't show you as I do that one. I'll just go ahead and create it and then at the end come back and show you my completed art journal page. I think what I may do is put a very dark black uh, border around the edge. Here's what my second girl looks like. Done the same way with cutting out pieces 
and putting it over the original image. Some of it are, is textured like that, just like I did on this one. And I did the same thing with the gold on her bracelets. She has feathers in her hat as well. So that's what my second one looks like. And I would like a black border that's just going to be on this side and around the top. The rest is going to be open so that I can see the ombre background. So what I'm going to use is my Dilutions journal block. This is that plastic journal block by Ranger and it's the Dilutions journal block. So I'm going to just take that and use my pencil and make my border and then paint this border in black. So for me the best way to do the edge is to take a Posca pen in the PC8K. It's a chisel tip and put my sheet protector behind it. Then it makes it super easy to just come in here and lay down black paint. Go along that edge that you drew with your journaling block and it makes a really really fast and easy way to color in this border. The chisel tips are great for this. They're also great for doing check checkered borders. Look how easy and quick that is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the border and then I'll come back and I show I love how the black border just tied in with the little black elements that are within the two paper dolls kind of fun and now I'm going to put some um, some lettering on the page and I'm going to use my Tim Holtz foam stamps. These are older than old and I know that you can't find them anymore. They don't make them anymore but they're just um, they're foam rubber stamps alphabet stamps that you use with paint. So I'm going to put the word fashion right here. Here's what the stamped letters look like in paint and I'm going to take a Posca pen in white and just add a little highlight edge to each one just to make the letters kind of pop and stand out a little bit. So I'm just going to go like that around the edges, see how that makes the lettering stand out. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take a black Posca pen and do the rest of the writing right here. Put the words passion for fashion on this page. And then the last thing I'm going to do, because there's a lot of empty space, I could do more journaling, I could do some um, doodling, some zen tangling, but I really just like the ombre effect and I like my paper doll girls and I really don't want to take away from that. So what I like to do is to take a pen, this is a Tombow brush marker, and I find one that's close to the color of the background and I'm just going to do some doodling in color and this way it's going to become part of that background but it's not going to take away from the background or from the design of the uh, of the girls so I'm just going to do some circle doodling And I'll finish that and then I'll show you the final page. Here's the final page and I hope you enjoyed watching me create this. It was really fun. I came up with that idea when I saw that uh, coloring book and the sections, each of the little sections and thought it would be a great paper piecing project. So I hope that inspired you and gave you an idea of something to try with uh, one of those fun cool adult coloring books and to use some different things like material and um, napkins, anything with texture, doilies, pattern textured paper, things like that and material especially, that's really fun to put down on paper. But to try some texture and put some different paper pieces onto your paper doll image and look what you can create. It's really fun and interesting and I really love how it turned out. It's it's cute. I love the black border. It tied in with the black that's within the dolls. And it was fun. Had a good time. Hope you did too. Thanks for stopping by. Go make art because art soothes the heart. And there will be a list of supplies I used for this project in the description box below.